Okay, shall we start? Okay, uh, we will now start part one, which is entitled Japan's CCUS Technology to Asia and the World. Uh, let, let me introduce uh, the speakers of the part one. Uh, Mr. Shigeru Kimura from area, and Mr. Toshitsugu Nozawa from Japan CCS, and Mr. Katsuya Watanabe from, uh, also from Japan CCS, and Dr. Sakura Nishioka from Jogmek, Mr. Nobuhiro Misawa from Osaki Kurujen Corporation, and Mr. Takashi Kamijo from MHI Engineering Limited. Okay, and let me introduce the purpose of the part one. And as mentioned at uh, opening session, uh, METI announced the launch of the Asia CCUS network on June 21st this year. This network is an international industry, academia, government prof platform aiming at the knowledge sharing and the improvement of the business environment for utilization of CCUS uh, throughout the Asia region. The member countries are all ASEAN countries, Australia, the United States, and Japan. In the light of this initiative of Japanese government, I believe that the following presentation will show how the research and development and supporting scheme of CCUS technologies being advanced by Japan will contr uh, contribute to the deployment of CCUS in Asia and other regions. Okay, to start the part one, uh, the first speaker is Mr. Uh, Shigeru Kimura, Special Advisor of the President on Energy Affairs, Economic Research Institute for ASEAN and Asia area, titled Development of CCUS in Asia Region and Role of Asia CCUS Network. Mr. Kimura, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kawadoko san, with the whole kind introduction. And uh, I uh, uh, share the, uh, my presentation material, so please wait. Can you see? Yeah. Yes, we can see. Okay, thank you. And I, I will not change to the uh, slide show mode. Ah. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? And uh, can, you can see the uh, my slide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's now presentation mode. Please go ahead. Uh, honorable guest, uh, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of area, I'd like to express my thanks to the uh, JCCS and uh, GCCSI for inviting area to this very important uh, forum and uh, giving me opportunity to speak CCS in the Asia regions. Uh, today, I'd like to introduce the uh, Asia CCS network and emphasize the uh, uh, importance of uh, CCS in the Asia regions. So firstly, I, I talk about the uh, EAS Energy Outlook. EAS stands for the uh, East Asia Summit, cons consists of the ASEAN 10 plus eight countries, Australia, China, India, Japan, Korea, New Zealand, Russia, and the USA. But uh, EAS Energy Outlook is not include the uh, Russians. Now in the ES region, is energy efficiency and the renewable is a high priority energy policies. So that uh, each ES country is uh, report uh, its energy efficiency and the renewable target uh, to the uh, coordinating countries. Then using the uh, energy outlook models, uh, area assess the, uh, this target, how this target to contribute to the energy saving and the CO2 emission deductions. In this regard, uh, we produce the uh, two energy outlook, BAU and the APS, and defined the uh, energy saving potential uh, as BAU minus APS uh, in terms of the energy consumption and also the uh, CO2 emissions. Uh, today, I just show you the uh, CO2 emission of the BAU scenario. 
uh, of the uh, uh, three uh, one region and the two countries. So this one is a CO2 emission uh, from the uh, 2070 to 2050 uh, of the uh, ASEAN, China, and the India. So ASEAN uh, increased the CO2 emission uh, 3.2 times from the 2070 to 2050. And uh, uh, India is uh, 3.0 times. But uh, China is uh, slightly decreased around uh, 6% uh, CO2 emission uh, from the year 2070 to 2050. Then, uh, as you know, the, uh, this figure is clearly indicate which sector and uh, uh, fuels emit the CO2 significantly. So that uh, we understand the uh, uh, major sector of the uh, CO2 emission uh, uh, look at the yellow part due to the lot of coal and gas consumption of power generations. And also use of the oil and the coal uh, which in, uh, consumed in the industry and the transport sectors. Thus, uh, CCUS can be applied for the uh, power sectors as well as the uh, uh, large uh, factories to produce the iron steel, chemical product, and the cement. Uh, based on the uh, previous slide, I show you the one of the uh, low carbon pathways in the Asia regions. For power sectors, uh, Asia still depends on the uh, coal and gas power generation. Uh, in this regard, uh, apply CCS to the uh, existing and the new coal and uh, gas power plant is very, very important. And also, uh, in the near future, we, uh, we can expect the uh, fuel sitting from the coal gas to the ammonia and the hydrogen. Now, uh, uh, summer power generation fully depends on the fossil fuel, coal and the gas. But uh, in future, after the uh, 2050, uh, summer power plant power generation also use the low carbon fuels like uh, ammonia and the hydrogen. In this case, uh, apply the CCS reduction of the hydrogen also uh, efficient. Uh, for the uh, final energy consumption sectors, uh, apply CCS to the uh, CO2 intensive factories such as the uh, iron steel and the uh, chemical, uh, chemical plant uh, in industry sectors. Also in transport sectors, it is not a matter of the CCS, but uh, fuel switching from the gasoline diesel to electricity and the hydrogen is also very important. But uh, I guess the uh, steel, gasoline and the diesel vehicles uh, will remain around the, uh, 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 in the future. Uh, in 2050, so that uh, DAC direct air capture with CCUS is also for crucial technologies. Thus, I can say, say, uh, say the uh, CCUS is an important and effective technology to reduce CO2 emission in Asia regions. Uh, considering the importance of uh, CCUS, uh, area held the uh, Third East Asia Energy Forum. Uh, last year, November, uh, discuss about the uh, CCUS and the carbon recycling in ASEAN regions. This forum is uh, kicked off by the uh, uh, Minister of the Veterans and also the uh, Secretary General of ASEAN, uh, Dato Rimujok Foy. And uh, after the uh, uh, opening remarks, uh, several ministers is, uh, delivered the uh, keynote speeches from the uh, Brunei Darussalam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laopedia, Japan, Japan, and Thailand. And uh, one of the major outcomes uh, from the uh, Southeast Asia Energy Forum is establish the uh, uh, collective framework uh, together with all stakeholders of CCUS, which are uh, industry, uh, academia, and government to promote uh, de de development and commercialization of CCUS in AES regions. Uh, in addition, uh, there was a uh, uh, policy movement uh, last, last years. Uh, 14th EAS Energy East Asia Summit, uh, Energy Ministers Meeting, we call the uh, EAS EMM 14, was also held in the same, um, same month uh, last year, November. And the uh, meeting is uh, prepared the uh, minister statement and the uh, minister statement is a touch upon the uh, CCUS. First, ministers noted the importance of CCUS and the carbon recycling. 
The second, ministers welcome the cooperation initiative led by Japan and area to establish the Asia CCS network. Then uh, through the uh, several steps uh, after uh, ES EMM 14, uh, Asia CCS network, ACN is, was uh, officially established uh, in uh, June this year. And uh, area is now appointed to the uh, sec secretariat of the uh, ACN. Then uh, first Asia CCS network forum was held 22-23 June this year. And this one is uh, sort of the uh, uh, launching ceremony of the uh, ACN. Then uh, energy minister of the, from the uh, 10 EAS countries is participated uh, this forum and deliver the uh, congratulatory speeches and uh, 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 expectation to the uh, ACN. Then as well, uh, three international organizations uh, like uh, such as the IEA, uh, head of the uh, uh, three organizations uh, such as IEA, uh, also participated and uh, delivered the uh, keynote speech. And uh, all uh, uh, three heads is, uh, uh, emphasized the uh, importance of uh, CCS in the Asia regions. Then uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 600 audience is uh, participated uh, every, uh, every day is uh, 22 and uh, 23. Then I move on to the uh, concept of the uh, Asia CCS network, uh, first vision. A vision is a through collaboration, cooperation on development and the deployment of CCS in EAS region. The network will contribute the carbonization of the region. This is a, our vision. Then in order to achieve the uh, vision, we have the uh, three milestones. First one is uh, 2020 to 25, launch of the Asia CCS network, uh, which is served as the served as platform to development of CCUS. But anyway, uh, network is already uh, established. Uh, second one is a uh, 2025 to 2030. Uh, milestone is a uh, development of a project. It's mean a uh, CCUS project and the business environment, the how uh, private private sector is uh, activate in the CCUS in, in Asia regions. Then a uh, third one is after 2030. Uh, ACN is uh, surely a contribute to decarbonizing the Asia economic zone with a focus on the uh, CCUS. Then in order to facilitate the uh, development of CCS uh, in this region, uh, we have the uh, following three missions. First, promote knowledge sharing through holding the annual forum, conference, workshop, and the meetings. And the second, conduct research study on technical economical and the legal standard of the uh, CCUS in, region, in this region. And uh, third, uh, holding capacity building training uh, to increase the uh, common understanding of the uh, CCUS in this region. Then uh, next, uh, I talk about the uh, finan uh, institutional framework of the uh, network. The network has the uh, two membership. Uh, first one is uh, members. Uh, of the uh, EAS uh, 18 countries. So far, ASEAN 10 plus Australia, India, Japan, United States is registered uh, to the uh, ACM. The second one is uh, supporting members. It consists of the uh, industry sector, industry sector, the private and public companies, academia, uh, financial sectors, and uh, regional and international organizations. And uh, in addition, uh, network is uh, also formulated with advisory group uh, to consist of the uh, policymakers and uh, CCUS CC expert. Then the advisory group is uh, provide the advice to uh, uh, secret secretariat, it's mean uh, area, uh, in terms of the uh, deployment of the uh, CCUS in Asia region. Uh, so far, uh, number of the uh, uh, membership is around the uh, 200 uh, as of the October 1st this year. Then uh, milestone, each milestone has the action plan. So that uh, at, at this slide, I show you the action plan is uh, a milestone of the 2020 to 25. Uh, we have uh, four ac uh, action plans. First one is uh, knowledge sharing and capacity building training. 
So far, uh, ACN is conducted three knowledge sharing conference to invite IEA, USDOE, and OGCI as the speakers. Uh, ACN also conducted the three days capacity building training uh, early October uh, this year uh, to focus on the uh, CCUS technologies, uh, which uh, capture, transport, storage, and the utilizations. Uh, more than uh, 100 uh, audience uh, is uh, uh, participated in this uh, uh, conference and also the uh, uh, capacity training. Second action plan is uh, launching a new project and uh, proceeding with existing project. Project means a CCUS project. This is very important and crucial uh, action plan for ACM. The third action plan is a building of the storage potential mapping. Uh, storage potential mapping is very, very important for the uh, uh, deployment of the CCUS. So that uh, we, uh, ACN, will apply the uh, literature survey to refer to the uh, existing report of storage potentials. Then after that, uh, we conduct the uh, uh, deep uh, research studies to produce more precise uh, storage potential <laughs> mapping uh, by the 2025. Then uh, based on the uh, uh, main result, the action plan, knowledge sharing, launching new projects, and building mapping, uh, we ACN will, will prepare the uh, roadmap. And the roadmap is uh, clearly show the uh, uh, pathway of the uh, deployment of CCUS in Asia regions. Then uh, launching of the uh, pilot CCS project is, uh, I say, the uh, crucial uh, action plan for ACN. Then uh, this project is surely reflect CCUS value chain, uh, which consists of the uh, capturing CO2, uh, utilization of the captured CO2, and the transporting CO2 and the storing the uh, CO2. So that's all uh, uh, element of the uh, uh, CCUS uh, is, sh should be e e included in the pilot project. Then uh, hopefully e ACN uh, will launch the uh, CCUS project uh, called the uh, pilot project uh, in near futures. Then how to launch the uh, CCUS uh, pilot project is as you know, the uh, ACN, uh, consists of the uh, all stakeholders of CCUS, CCUS activities, uh, which are uh, member uh, uh, government, the policy policy makers, and the industry industry sectors, academia, financial sectors, and the regional and the international organizations. So that uh, through collaboration of the members and the supporting members of ACN, uh, ACN will initiate a pilot CCUS project. Hopefully until 2025. In this regard, uh, ACN also have to utilize the expertise and the experience of CCS technologies owned by the uh, Australia, Japan, and the United States. I mean, in the developed countries. Then uh, I would like to conclude my present today's presentation. Uh, Asia region is, uh, uh, will continuously depend on the fossil fuel for power generation and uh, uh, road transport sectors. And uh, in this regard, CCS is uh, one of the important options for Asia region to achieve the uh, low carbon energy transition. Thus, uh, Asia CCS network, ACN, has established and uh, dedicated to promote the CCS deployment in this region. Uh, basically, Deployment of CCS is purely technology-oriented matters. Thus, advanced CCS technology being owned by the developed countries, such as Japan, are indispensable. Uh, in addition to the uh, technologies, appropriate legal and financial framework uh, will surely improve uh, CCS business environment. Uh, that is my uh, uh, conclusion. And uh, last, uh, not but least, uh, Asia Citizen Network is, uh, is uh, set up the, uh, its website, uh, including a uh, lot of the uh, CCS uh, information and the uh, activity of the uh, Asia Citizen Network. So that uh, very much appreciate the uh, audience to access to the uh, ACN website and to get the uh, updated uh, CCS information from the uh, uh, website. 
thank you very much uh, for your attention and uh, I back floor to the uh, Kawabata san. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Kimura san, uh, for your uh, very detailed uh, presentation about Asia CCUS network. Okay, uh, we received a couple of questions. Uh, okay, the first question is the policy in Asia for CCS is still at early stage. Any initiatives from area to have dialogue with government for rule making aspects uh, which will be critical for improving the investment environment? Uh questions and uh, uh, I understand the uh, CCS is a uh, very brand new technologies in terms of the uh, uh, carbon neutralities uh, compared to the uh, solar PV and the wind. Solar PV is very, very uh, popular in the in, uh, uh, Asia region, the ASEAN region. So that uh, firstly, uh, through the knowledge sharing and the capacity building training, uh, I'd like to move up the uh, understanding of the CCS of uh, Asia countries. Uh, then after that, uh, uh, we area as a secretariat of the ACN would like to set, would like to hold the, uh, some uh, opportunity to discuss about the uh, investment and some uh, and the policies and the regulations. So that uh, anyway, uh, end of the day, uh, we will do. But uh, first, uh, one year, the two years, uh, we are uh, dedicated to, uh, to increase the uh, common understanding of the CCS in uh, Asia regions. Uh, thank you very much okay. <laughs> uh, for your questions. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your uh, answer. And uh, we, al we also have another question, and I received this in Japanese, so please allow to uh, read it in Japanese. Uh, at Asia CCUS network, Japan's CO2 that Japan emitted to be transported to other Asian countries where there is uh, potential for storage. Is there is that a view by by Japan to transport CO2 emitted in Japan? Uh, focus on the uh, CCS value chain. CCS value chain is very, very important, even though the ASEAN countries, some countries is a uh, big potential of the storage, like uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, but uh, some countries like uh, Singapore and uh, uh, something like uh, Cambodia, <laughs> they don't have the <laughs> uh, storage. So that uh, firstly, I seek for the uh, uh, set up of uh, uh, Asia, uh, ASEAN CCS value chain, uh, uh, all ASEAN 10 countries join, then uh, uh, talk about the uh, uh, CCS value chain. So that uh, some countries uh, emit CO2 and some countries is uh, uh, storage uh, CO2. So that in uh, total ASEAN, it's, it's, uh, uh, CCS is uh, really, really work. Then uh, I think that uh, uh, not only ASEAN, but also there are big, pot uh, large potential in the Asia region. So that uh, by initi initial stage, we focus on the ASEAN uh, uh, CCS value chain, but uh, in, in the future, after 2025, uh, expand to the uh, uh, Asia regions, uh, joined the uh, uh, ASEAN uh, member, member countries, like uh, Japan and, uh, and also the, uh, uh, I hope the uh, China and the India the, uh, will, will become the uh, members. So that, uh, uh, yes, uh, I uh, consider the uh, Asia-wide uh, CCS value chain. Then uh, ACN is surely support and also the provide the opportunity to discussion on the uh, uh, Asia-wide uh, value chains. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we still have some couple of questions, but uh, it's almost time to go next. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Kimura. And we next we will have a presentation from Mr. Toshitsugu Nozawa, uh, Associate General Manager, CO2 Transportation Management uh, uh, Management Department, Japan CCS Company Limited. Titled 
CO2 SIP transportation, current status and approach to challenges. Mr. Nozawa, please. Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Okay, thank you for your chair. Okay, hi. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is a great honor to present CO2 tra ship transportation, current status and approach to challenges to you today. Okay, please attention to the screen. First, I will explain how CO2 is mainly transported in Japan sometimes comparing it with other countries. Next, I will explain the outline of our challenges for technological de development of CO2 transportation in Japan, which have already started this year. As a side note, please let me call liquefied CO2 as LCO2 in this presentation current status of CO2 transportation. In the Japan industrial market to date, CO2 has been used for welding, food and beverage, and cooling uh, for uh, or industrial products, and so on. I guess you sometimes recognize CO2 in your life when you see the ingredients for drinks like Coke or water with gas or dry ice for cooling. CO2 emitted from industrial areas is refined, liquefied, transported, and stored. As a sampling data, LCO2 produced in Japan was about 670,000 tons. If CCUS is socially implemented after 2030, we expect LCO2 production will expand to 10 times rapidly and 100 times by 2050. It is possible to transport CO2 in gas, dense, liquid, or solid phase. However, liquid phase is known as the most important efficient for transportation. In Japan, LCO2 is secured in the condition of temperature and pressure around minus 20 degrees Celsius and two megapascals. Tank trucks, often called as a tank lorries in Japan, are primarily used as a mode of inland transport. Tank trucks sometimes take car ferries and cross the water. However, tank trucks normally run short distances and we rarely see them. We have no experience of transporting CO2 for CCUS because it has not been implemented in Japan society. Of course, we studied what is the most suitable mode for CCUS in Japan. For example, we found actual examples overseas five CO2 dedicated tankers are under operation in Europe. Pipeline are used for CCS and enhanced oil recovery in North America. In this slide, five CO2 tankers are introduced with their names in the green cells. All of the tankers have Japanese owners also Another Japanese shipping company is a shareholder of the ship management company of this fleet. The tank capacity of these vessels is 1,250 or 1,800 cubic meters. The lowest cargo temperature is minus 30 or minus 40 degrees Celsius. And the maximum pressure in the tank is 18 to 20 bar. As a result of our investigation, we found a record of CO2 transportation by a ship named Amagimaru in Japan. However, it is a special case that existed more than 30 years ago. And for this reason, 
we did not recognize that know-how of CO2 shipping in Japan had been established. Our conclusion was that we must design and build a LCO2 tanker suitable for a new era of CCUS and to establish the technology for safe operation of vessels. Please let us review why we decided to put the priority on vessels as the mode of transport. This is a comparison table. Tank track is the ideal mode for short distance, small quantity, high frequency transportation. However, in the case of large scale transportation, pipeline is more effective in the dense phase CO2. Although the initial investment is large, the lower operation expenses of pipelines are attractive. Vessels are always required to meet port and bus specifications. Once they are met, a vessel is capable of loading and unloading cargo flexibly around the world. In particular, when a cargo is transported over a long distance by vessel, the transportation cost per ton mile becomes lower. We simulated the feasibility of transporting 1 million tons of LCO2 per year to another location more than 200 kilometers away. Tank trucks with a standard size of 10 tons would need to make 100,000 trips. An adequate number of trucks and drivers are not available. And basically, it is also a rather costly method and not competitive. Regarding pipelines, the construction cost tends to be high in Japan, which is mountainous and hilly and flat areas are limited. Securing the land for pipelines will also take time. Although investment costs for vessels exceed millions of dollars per unit, they are the most suitable mode for large scale and la long distance transportation with the highest level of energy efficiency per ton mile. On the display, I would like to share an example of past survey of potential CO2 storage sites in Japan. Mega cities such as Tokyo, Nagoya, and Osaka are located on the Pacific Ocean side. Also, industrial areas emitting CO2 are mainly situated inside the pink oval area in the map. And in order to implement CCUS under this situation, ah, sorry. On the other hand, it is it has been estimated that the suitable storage sites are mainly located off the coast of Japan Sea, roughly in the uh, light blue oval area. In order to implement CCUS under this situation, it is necessary to apply the most optimal transportation mode. Our answer at this moment is vessels with reference to study in slide number eight. Approach to challenges, step forward actual utilization. Before talking about the approach to challenges, I would like to refer to one technical issue about CO2. When the temperature of CO2 reaches minus 56.6 degrees Celsius and its ambient pressure reaches 0.518 megapascals, the gas phase, liquid phase, and solid phase are mixed. Its condition becomes extremely unstable. The point is the so-called triple point. I mentioned on slide number five 
that's the temperature and pressure during transportation of LCO2 in Japan was minus 20 degrees Celsius and two megapascals, which roughly correspond to the red circle. If we want to use a large tank for transportation and storage, we have to reduce the thickness of the outer panels for cost mitigation. In order to make the outer panel thinner, it is necessary to reduce the internal pressure of the tank. Under liquid phase, the temperature of CO2 will approach the triple point. There is a serious risk that LCO2 will change to dry ice, you know. To identify the conditions under which dry ice does not occur, in a consistent operation is the most important issue. Where should the optimal, con should the op optimal condition as indicated by the orange cycle be set? We have just embarked on the challenge to determine this. This is a summary of the challenges we face. The current condition of LCO2 transportation is far from the triple point, which means the operational risk is low. However, we need to make the tank larger for large-scale transportation, so we must identify the conditions so as to ensure safe operation even close to the triple point. This is our goal. New Energy and Industrial Technology De Development Organization, NEDO, solicited proposal for the project to address the challenges in March this year. The proposal of the project aims for the safe and efficient transportation of CO2 emitted from some industrial locations for CCUS. NEDO and the contractors will develop the integrated transportation system under optimal temperature and pressure conditions. The project scope is from liquefaction at the loading port to storage at the receiving port. The contractors who have been commissioned by NEDO have formed a consortium. The consortium member are JCCS, Engineering Advancement Association, Itochu, and Nippon Steel. The consortium will work in a collaboration with subcontractors, including shipping companies, an engineering company, and a university. The goal of this project is to complete the efficient preparation for the social implementation of CO2 transportation for CCUS of approximately 1 million tons per annum as of 2030. The consortium will address the themes of technological development and research described in the box below. I would like to emphasize the transport demonstration for CCUS as one of the key technological development in this project, which is expected to be the first trial in the world. As demonstration test to verify the technology establishment, 10,000 tons of LCO2 will be loaded to a 999 gross ton size tanker and transported from a coal-fired power plant in Maizu to a base in Tamakumai 10 times per year. This slide summarizes the schedule of the project, which will be implemented over six years. For the demonstration test, theme number two, we plan to complete the EPC for onshore equipment by fiscal year 
2023, and the marine transport demonstration will take place from fiscal year 2024. In addition to technological developments and demonstration, a commercialization survey is also a feature of the project. We believe that evaluating the cost of transporting CO2 in future markets is quite important for the social implementation of CCUS. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Um, okay, and we also received a couple of questions, but we don't have enough time. I will pick just one question. Uh, what is the most difficult point in designing CO2 dedicated tankers? In short, what is the unique aspects compared to other gas carriers? Okay, thank you very much for your good question. Um, I understand quite feasible to build the CO2 tanker for LCO2 at minus 20 degrees and 2 megapascals. And we recently read, read an article that Aurora has ordered two uh, CO2 tankers to Chinese shipyards uh, for Northern Light project. At the point is the cargo condition close to the triple point. No one can say the techniques was established to avoid CO2 frozen on board. And the consortium will investigate CO2 conditions of lower temperature and lower pressure through the demonstration test. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, sorry for declining the questions, but uh, we have to go next. Okay, uh, we will have a presentation from Mr. Katsuya Watanabe, uh, General Manager, Geological Survey Department, Japan CCS Company Limited, titled Outline of the Project Investigation of Potential Sites for CCS Storage in Japan. Mr. Watanabe, please. Thank you, Mr. Kaobata. Uh, I will talk about the project investigation of potential sites for CO2 storage in offshore Japan. Uh, JCCS has been conducting this project on behalf of the Japanese government. This is an outline of my presentation. First, an overview of the project. This project has been carried out since 2014 as a joint project of Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, METI, and the Ministry of the Environment, MOE, and has been commissioned to JCCS. A panel of experts consisting of university professor and research inst institute is held about three times a year to discuss the evaluation results and how to proceed the project. The current outcome goal is to select about three candidate sites for survey well drilling by around 2023. This slide summarizes the storage potential evaluation work that has been conducted in Japan. In 2005, Wright reported the storage potential of 146 billion tons in offshore areas with water depths less than 200 meters and in onshore areas. Then in 2012, uh, NEDO-ICE uh, reported uh, uh, storage potential of 90 billion tons in areas between 200 and 1,000 meter water depths. These results are based on simple geological analysis using coarse density 2D sizing data. In the simple geological analysis, for example, uh, fault evaluation is not performed. Then in 2013, METI and MOE held committees and determined priority survey areas based on the previous studies. 
And uh, based on the result in 2013, uh, the project uh, investigation of potential sites for CO2 storage was started in 2014. This project covers tailing aquifers in the waters around Japan. The next topic is survey methodology and applicable technologies. Uh, one of the difficulties in evaluating suitable storage site is to extract pairs of reservoirs and cap rock layers with good properties. In general, shallow formations have good reservoir properties, but the seal capacity of the cap rock layer is often low. The opposite is the case for deep formations. The project evaluates whether these geological conditions are met using existing and newly acquired data. This slide shows the selection flow from pre-examination uh, to uh, selection of suitable storage sites. The yellow color steps are the geological analysis and flow simulation for CO2 behavior. As can be seen, uh, these steps are carried out several times. While light and net iced evaluations are simple evaluations using coarse density 2D seismic data, uh, in the project investigation of potential sites for CO2 storage, the evaluation accuracy is improved by using 3D seismic data. At the present, the sites where evaluation has progressed the most have reached the uh, blue dashed line here, uh, just before survey well drilling. In order to proceed to comprehensive uh, evaluation, uh, drilling of survey wells is necessary. This slide explains the uh, geological char characteristics of Japan and the notable points in conducting the uh, project. In Japan, active faults develop along the boundaries of four tectonic plates, and the crustal deformation is generally active. In addition, uh, there are large changes in reservoir properties because the scale of the sedimentary, ba sedimentary basins are relatively small. Considering these characteristics, uh, detailed geological evaluation is required, and 3D seismic data is required from a relatively early evaluation stage. Another point is that the permeability of the reservoir is uh, often low, because the origin of the source rock body is generally volcanic rock. Therefore, uh, well data acquisition uh, in the survey wells are important in evaluating injectivity and storage capacity. Comparing 2D and 3D seismic data, uh, 3D data has overwhelmingly more surface information than 2D data. By using 3D seismic data, uh, detailed analysis of faults and sedimentary phases analysis described on the next slide can be performed. This is an example of sedimentary phases analysis. On the seismic section, many reflected waves with strong amplitude and good continuity can be seen here. This yellow dashed part can be interpreted as a lobe of a submarine fan system here. And good reservoir distribution can be expected. And above the reservoir, uh, muddy strata with weak amplitude are widely distributed and uh, evaluated as a cap rock layer. In this way, we identify reservoirs and cap rock layers by sedimentary phases analysis. And there is another uh, 3D seismic data set next to this area, and the storage capacity of about 1 billion tons was calculated using these two data sets. Last, 
the outcomes so far and the summary. This slide shows the evaluation results of the storage capacity as of March 2020. For example, this orange bar graph in the lower left shows that there are three sites that were valued at 0.1 billion to 0.5 billion tons using 3D seismic data. A total of seven sites were extracted using 3D data and the total storage capacity is 9 billion tons. However, uh, please note that this storage capacity is evaluated by the volumetric method, which evaluates the capacity of the gap of the rock particles, and does not take into account sealability, injection well arrangement, injectivity, and uh, CO2 movement. The storage capacity ever uh, calculated area so far is basically limited around anticlinal structures that have been drilled. We believe that gentle monoclinal structure area away from the well have huge additional potential. We are also evaluating this area, but we are not able to extract storage areas with confidence because they are far from the well and we have only 2D seismic data. In this additional potential area, uh, additional storage capacity can be expected by acquiring new 3D seismic data and drilling exploration wells. This is a summary. First, the estimated amount of storage within the surveyed range is about 9 billion tons in a total of seven sites using 3D seismic data. There is a possibility of huge additional potential in monoclinal structure area. Second, in order to reduce uncertainty in assessing the amount of storage and to improve the accuracy of risk assessment, it's necessary to drill survey wells. Third, we aim to select about three candidate sites for survey well drilling by around 2023. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Watanabe. And we still have a couple of questions and let me pick one question. Uh, sorry to allow me to read in Japanese. Uh, so I have this type of question. Um, in Japan, there are seismic activities everywhere. So um, isn't it difficult to conduct CO2 storage? Allow me to respond in Japanese. And when you look at the geology uh, near Japan, and this is not uh, the same uh, in all parts. Uh, the, the structural uh, changes are relatively uh, small. So with, there are areas with a uh, small number of faults. Um, so away from active fault or active structure, we try to identify areas like that. And in those areas, we feel that storage is possible. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Watanabe. Um, sorry for declining other, other questions. Um, we have to go next. Okay, the, we will next have a presentation from Dr. Sakura Nishioka, Deputy Director, Global Coordination Team, CCS Group, Japan Oil, Gas and Minerals National, uh, National Corporation, JOGMEC, uh, titled JOGMEC's CCS Initiative Toward 2050 Carbon Neutrality. Dr. Nishioka, please. Uh, okay. director at JOGMAX CCS Group. Um, I'm very honored to have this opportunity today. I also like to express my respect to um, the Global CCS Institute and Japan CCS for uh, leading the CCS deployment in Japan and other parts of Asia. Um, in my presentation, I explain a little bit about our organization JOGMAC and our CCS initiatives including the ongoing projects and project evaluation guidelines. 
be released by the end of this year. Okay, um, first of all, for uh, those who might not be familiar with us, um, please allow me to briefly introduce our organization. Um, we are incorporated administrative agency that has been established by the Japanese government. The principal mission of JOGMEC is to uh, secure a stable and affordable supply of energy and mineral resources and to maintain and strengthen Japan's industrial foundation. For this purpose, we have uh, four areas of responsibility, oil and natural gas, metals, coal, and geothermal energy. Um, currently, we must recover the upstream to midstream production process. However, um, after experiencing this dynamic fluctuations in the energy, uh, energy environment, which we have witnessed over the past few years, I think there is a need for a JOGMEC to be involved in the entire value chain in order to secure a stable supply of energy and resources, which also include downstream process. Um, taking that into consideration, we are currently reviewing our functions so that we may uh, provide more viable and effective support to the private sector. Um, what kind of support do we provide? Um, for each area of responsibility, we offer eight support schemes, which are listed in the blue box at the bottom. Um, we conduct geological surveys and marine resource development, financial assistance, technological development, and technical support. We also introduce <laughs> stockpiling, environmental safety, and mine pollution control. We also provide information and also promote uh, resource diplomacy and international cooperation. Moreover, um, regarding our contribution towards um, achieving carbon neutrality, we released the uh, Jogamic Carbon Neutral Initiative in April of this year. This initiative, uh, this initiative consists of uh, three basic policies and six action plans. This explains how we simultaneously uh, reconcile energy security and decarbonization. Okay, and this slide shows our four uh, major initiatives for CCS. The first initiative is technology development. Um, since the time when we were a secure Kodan, Japan National Oil Corporation, uh, we have been engaged in research and development of um, geological and reservoir evaluation for many decades, which are um, clearly the key elements for CCS. We also conduct research on facility technologies. I explain further in the next slide. The second is CCS deployment uh, through feasibility studies. We have been conducting projects worldwide that contribute to CCS deployment and um, as a governmental institution, we conduct activities that could solve the challenges in the field of CCS that are raised by Japanese companies. The last initiative is the international cooperation. To achieve long-term climate goals with the smallest possible cost, we need a good business environment, including CCS friendly policies. For that, um, global cooperation is vital. This is a list of the subjects of our, our um, R&D. We have a team of um, approximately 30 engineers working on this R&D projects. For subsurface, um, we conduct site screening and site selection. Um, this is the uh, selection of potential areas for a show to stretch among sedimentary basins Based on, um, based on available geological data and regional geology. Site characterization, uh, we construct geological models based on a seismic, well, and core data uh, for the quantitative characterization of subsurface reservoirs. We also conduct evaluations of um, well integrity, modeling and simulation, uh, as well as monitoring and model calculation. Um, for surface, 
we evaluate the most suitable Shishi escorts with partners. This evaluation is based on the uh, specification of various upstream oil gas fields and the requirements of the demand side. As a part of this, we work on R&D for uh, membranes and SMR, meaning uh, steam methane reforming. For more details on our R&D, it would be great if you could visit the Jogmac website. This slide shows um, our ongoing projects. Currently, there are four ammonia-related projects in progress in Indonesia, um, Australia, uh, Siberia, and Abu Dhabi. Also, uh, two EOR CCUS projects going on, um, one in Indonesia and the other in Japan. In addition to this, we have a CCS feasibility studies in Australia and Indonesia, and more coming up. Okay, um, allow me to explain one of our uh, recent projects just started in July this year. This is an um, overview of a feasibility study of um, ammonia supply chain from Australia to Japan. Ammonia does not emit CO2 during combustion, and it is considered a promising next generation zero emission fuel for um, energy intensive thermal power plants and marine engines. It's also expected to have an early take up as a zero emission fuel. And this is a joint project with the uh, Australian company Woodside Energy, the Marubeni Corporation, Hokuriku uh, Electric Power Company, and Kansai Electric Power Company. We uh, conduct a feasibility study of the entire supply chain, including the uh, production of clean fuel ammonia from natural gas in Australia, which encompass uh, CCS and CCU, and uh, bio sequestration, marine transportation to Japan, utilizing uh, utilization of ammonia as a fuel for uh, power generation and marine use and financing. <coughs> Another project we started is the um, EOR pilot test with the Impex Corporation in Agano, Niigata. Um, in this project, we demonstrate the improvement of CO2 EOR efficiency and how it would contribute to verifying CO2 behavior in the reservoir. Pleasantly, uh, we are in the process of conducting preparatory work, including formulating a detailed test plan creating plans to drill two new wells in the coming year and carrying out the pilot test. Yes, um, as I have explained, I believe that uh, JOGMEC has made significant multifaceted progress in uh, promoting CCS over the past year. And now we see uh, that there is a need for us to uh, establish our own evaluation guidelines. The guidelines will comply three main modules which are CO2 geological storage capacity and uh, GHG emissions reduction and carbon intensity. Um, regarding CO2 geological storage capacity, in response to the project proposal, we uh, review a long-term storage stability. In other words, we uh, consider how much CO2 could be injected and how it's calculated and the risk of CO2 leakage to the reservoir. Uh, we have been drafting these guidelines by um, referring to the existing evaluation methods and the uh, permit or licensing systems in Europe, um, Australia, Canada, and the United States. Evaluation items would include uh, the management system of the project, site screening and risk management, also uh, well infrastructure, injection operation, monitoring, and verification of site closure. Um, regarding a guideline for the uh, GHG emissions reduced by CCS, there are a variety of monitoring, uh, reporting, and verification uh, MRV methodologies to uh, quantify the extent to uh, which CO2 emissions have reduced in emission trading systems. Um, this includes the Albada uh, emission offset system uh, using Canada, the EU ETS, and the Climate Solutions Plan used in Australia and several more. 
Notably, uh, these methodologies differ in some respects. Um, for example, uh, they differ in how they set project boundaries, uh, target GHG types, and how they set baseline scenarios. They also have different views on the uh, permanency of the geological stretch as well. Based on this existing um, MRV methods, <clears throat> we have been drafting our own GHG guideline. Um, finally, I expound on carbon intensity, or in other words, the environmental value of the projects. Um, because as a governmental entity, we should understand the environmental value of the products generated by the pro projects we support. So uh, it is important to note that uh, there are no internationally unified evaluation standards and GHG accounting methodology by which we may assess the environment of value of products, such as um, LNG, uh, blue hydrogen, or uh, blue ammonia, which involves CCS. <clears throat> Nevertheless, um, the study is currently underway under various organizations and international initiatives, and we recognize that we are one of them. Um, this is not an easy task, of course, because the uh, environment of value of the uh, resource development sector is very complex as each stakeholder has their own value claims and varying scopes of uh, responsibilities. We also need to ensure transparency, uh, which require a complicated method. Um, in addition, uh, there are global discussion of um, methane leakage management and measurement. In this study, uh, we tackle a leak control method including the actual measurement and calculation methods. I like to emphasize again that uh, these are guidelines and not strict criteria for us to decide whether or not we should accept project proposals. In other words, uh, these guidelines are a sort of a list of evaluation items. So uh, for the time being, um, the guidelines are restricted to our internal, uh, internal use only for the purpose of reviewing project proposals submitted by Japanese companies. Um, however, uh, in the near future, we expect to share these guidelines with other Asian countries through the Asian Shushi US network. Um, as um, Kimura since they presented, um, the Asian Shushi US network has already started a variety of activities. And I believe that uh, this network would play a very important role in creating standards or rules for a CCS in Asia. Um, through this network, we like to contribute to the promotion of CCS in Asia with our CCS expertise. It is my hope that um, our guidelines would become uh, one of the driving forces accelerating Asia's CCS uh, deployment. We also see um, international cooperation as one of the keys to uh, CCS deployment from the uh, viewpoint of technical development and business environment development. Um, CCS covers a wide variety of engineering challenges and involves a um, diversified aspect of development. In addition to uh, the physical infrastructure, such as COT pipelines and regional policy development, CCS also involves diverse aspects of social development, such as community development. Uh, for the success of CCS, we very much appreciate insights from um, previous projects that have been conducted in Europe, Australia, and North America. Um, thanks to Global CCS Institutes, uh, we can catch up with Global CCS Trends and Project Progress. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to join the very important dialogues with CCS experts that are continuously supported by GCCSI. In addition, um, in terms of cooperation and project promotion in Asia, the Asia CC US network is obviously important. The network has kindly offered us the sheet as an advisory board, and we are actively involved in it. Um, in terms of bilateral cooperation, we officially cooperate with uh, several countries, including the governments of Alberta of Canada and government of Victoria of Australia. Um, 
based on the strategic cooperative relationships and dialogue platform with uh, resource producing countries and related institutions, we have established more than 50 years of resource diplomacy. Uh, we are now rebuilding those relationships with the concept of energy decarbonization at its core. Uh, finally, um, we also be actively involved in the carbon market by participating in the CCS Plus initiative. Carbon credits are one way to improve the economy of CCS. Um, CCS Plus initiative is an um, organization made up of the uh, frontliners in the field of CCS and carbon credits, such as Total Energies, Equinor, BP, and CarbFix. Uh, CCS Plus initiatives aims to establish methodology that uh, would be applied to the voluntary carbon market for uh, carbon credit generation. Our main role in the initiative is to uh, contribute to um, establishing methodologies with our expertise uh, while establishing network with uh, stakeholders. Okay, uh, this marks the end of my presentation. Uh, please visit our website for more information. We now have the English page available. Also, uh, your inquiries are always welcome. Uh, please contact us at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Nishioka, uh, for your very, very impressive uh, presentation. Um, uh, I'm upset uh, we received a lot of questions for your uh, presentation, but uh, we uh, we should pick up one or two from this. And there's a lot of, uh, there, there's some questions about a guideline you mentioned on slide maybe seven and could you uh, explain a little bit more about the guideline on this slide okay yeah uh, so for the first one uh, okay i focus on uh, the guideline for a short geological stretch okay um if i break down the guideline for a shield to geological stretch uh, there are four key elements uh, well um Number one is capacity. Uh, we review whether the site had the sufficient capacity uh, to store the required volume or not. Um, and the second point is uh, containment, meaning uh, I, uh, we will review if the operator can contain the CO2 indefinitely. And the third point is uh, transport and injectivity. Uh, we see if uh, CO2 can be transported to the site and um, sustained injection maintained at required rates. And the last point we review is um, that this is the last point, okay. Um, it is the monitoring and remediation. We review uh, whether an injected CO2 can be monitored and uh, remedial activities deployed within economic limits. Um, if anyone has any more interest regarding the guidelines, uh, please contact me at any time. I'm glad to answer questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we still have one or two minutes. Um, okay, then could you explain? Uh, uh, okay, I, I pick this question. Does JOGMEC have a scheme to support the securing of suitable CCS sites overseas? Um, yes, we are currently in, in the process of discussion with METI um, on a new scheme for uh, the survey of suitable shisha sites. Um, right now, I can say that um, in case the geogamic law is amended and we are to be in charge of that, uh, we have the expertise and experience to um, carry out a sufficient survey of suitable sites by utilizing our experience um, in ENP. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nishioka. Uh, we have to go next. Okay, thank you very much. And then next presentation, we will have, we will have a presentation from Mr. Nobuhiro Misawa, Ex Executive Director, uh, Engineering Department, Osaki Kurgen Corporation, titled 
progress of Osaki Kurujen oxygen from ICCC with CO2 capture demonstration test. Misa san, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Do you hear me? Yes, uh, not Chairman, but uh, only MC. <laughs> to talk in this forum. My presentation is about the progress uh, of oxygen, oxygen brown, brown IGCC demonstration test with short, cap uh, with short capture. And also I will introduce you our activity to toward carbon neutrality today. Osai Kurujen Corporation is established in 2009 by Chugoku Electric Power Company and J Power. And this project is uh, supported by Japanese government, METI and NEDO. Our demonstra demonstration test plant is located in an island of Hiroshima Prefecture. We have already constructed IGCC with CO2 capture plant and verify the basic performance. The objective of the project is to demonstrate innovative low carbon coal fired power generation solutions that combine coal gasification and fuel cell power generation technologies with CO2 capture. The project period is divided into three steps. In the first step, we verify the uh, performance of our IGC technology and complete it with success. Coal is gasified in the gasifier by high purity oxygen. This gasifier is our proprietary technology. Syn gas is sent to, ga sent to gas turbine combined cycle to generate power of 166 megawatts. In the second step, we install the CO2 capture unit of 400 tons per day capacity and already verified the basic performance so far. We are now constructing CO2 liquefaction unit for carbon recycling trial, which will be... <laughs> to the third step, demonstration test. We are constructing fuel cell, which is 1.2 megawatts SOFC. This picture shows the IGCC demonstration facility. The configuration of the facility is almost the same as that of commercial IGCC plant. And we verified all the performances and functions needed for commercialization of this technology, including safety. Uh, safety is an important factor because the gas composition and the process value is significantly, significantly different from conventional PCF plant. This figure shows IGCC with CO2 capture. Uh, sorry. Uh, this table summarizes the results of step one demonstration test. We verified efficiency, environmental performance, reliability, flexibility, and so on. And all targets were uh, achieved. So we are confident to go forward to commercialization of our IGCC technology. Uh, I would like to emphasize the flexibility of IGCC plant. The test result revealed the very high load change rate equal or superior to natural gas combined cycle power generation. Electric power is generated by combined cycle in both IGCC system and natural gas combined cycle system. Therefore, the result proves that oxygen blown coal gasification has high load change performance in terms of gas production. Utilizing these flexible features, IGCC commercial plants will be able to adjust severe power fluctuations caused by renewable energy, which will be further installed in Japan towards the future carbon neutrality. 
This figure shows IGCC with CO2 capture flow in the step two test, demonstration test. These facilities consist of CO2 capture unit and sour shift catalyst pilot unit. Because single pressure of CO2 capture unit is high as about three megapascals, we selected physical absorption method suitable for high, pressure, high partial pressure CO2 gas. Singers after acid gas removers is, is sent to sweet shift reactor where CO2 is shifted to CO2. CO2 is captured in absorber and recovered by de decompression in flash drives. Singers including high concentration hydrogen is returned to gas turbine as fuel. In this facility, 70% of total gas is sent to CO2 capture unit in order to capture 15% of total CO2 volume emitted by IGCC plant. In addition, we are conducting long-term durability test of the sour shift catalyst. This catalyst is newly developed and works at lower temperature than standard catalyst. Required, required the amount of steam in the shift reactor can be reduced drastic, drastically, which will result in avoiding energy loss in CO2 capture process. This picture shows the CO2 capture facilities located next to the IGCC plant. This highest tower is the CO2 absorber. This was carried out from December 2019 and suspended February this year due to the construction of fuel cell. And the test will resume early next year. Demonstration test targets and the progress of step two test is shown in this sheet. With regard to the basic performance, CO2 capture performance, recovery rate and purity, and CO2 capture energy, which relates to net efficiency of our plant is evaluated. We also evaluated operability and reliability to establish operation and maintenance method by GCC with CO2 capture plant. In addition, CO2 capture cost will be uh, evaluated using CAPEX and OPEX data. According to the test results so far, CO2 capture performance exceeded the target value, and we also established the operational method of IGCC with CO2 capture power plant. And also, we verify the influence of coal property on CO2 capture process. These three items will be evaluated next year. From here, I will talk about the CO2 utilization and carbon recycling. This figure describes the change of single composition through the CO2 capture process. At the outlet of gas fire, singles includes 50% of CO and 20% of hydrogen. At the inlet of shift reactor, steam is injected and CO is converted to CO2 and steam is converted to hydrogen in the reactor. At the outlet of the reactor, gas composition is CO2 40% and hydrogen 55%. CO2 absorber captures CO2, therefore, high purity CO2 is obtained. On the other hand, the balance of the gas contains about 85% of hydrogen. This hydrogen was used as a fuel of gas survey in the step two test. But in the uh, step three test, hydrogen will be sent to fuel cell to produce power. This sheet summarizes the utilization of high purity CO2. 
A portion of CO2 gas from the CO2 capture unit is sent to liquefaction unit and the liquefied CO2 with food grade purity is produced. Its capacity is about uh, five tons per day. This CO2 will be transported by tank truck to tomato cultivation farm outside of the island. The other activity is contribution to carbon recycling promoted by NEDO. A portion of CO2 is sent to CO2 buffer tank and then transported by pipe to carbon recycling R&D area located inside the aisle, inside of the site. The capacity of this uh, supply facility is 10 tons per day. These two units are now under construction and CO2 will be supplied in the middle of next year. This picture shows the example of a tomato cultivation farm. At present, this farm is purchasing CO2 and increasing CO2 concentration inside of greenhouse. This picture shows the carbon recycling around the area. The area is located away from CO2 capture unit. And CO2 gas will be transported by pipe of about 450 meters long. This sheet shows the carbon recycling R&D program. Japanese government Meiji announced carbon recycling 3C initiative in September 2019. 1C of the 3C means center of research and also Kamijima town, where our cooperation is located, is selected for the research base. The role of our cooperation is to prepare the infra infrastructure of the research activity, including supply of CO2 gas required by research organization. In the research area, technologies regarding to CO2 use concrete, chemical product, gas to lipids, bio, and biojet fuel will be developed with starting next year. Finally, I'd like to explain our future vision of how our technology can contribute to carbon neutrality. As I mentioned, combination of coal Gas, gasifier, coal gasification, carbon conversion of uh, syngas, and CO2 capture process can produce flexible and high efficiency electric power, high purity CO2, and CO2 free hydrogen. This high load agility will be able to compensate power fluctuations caused by, renew caused by renewable energy. High purity CO2 will be supplied to uh, achieve CCUS and carbon recycling. CO2 free hydrogen will be supplied to industries such as transportation and manufacturing, where electrification is relatively difficult. Furthermore, a uh, part of uh, part or When a part of or all of coal is replaced by biomass and combined with CCS, our technology will be able to build BEX system, which will be a key technology for carbon neutrality. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Misawa. Uh, it's a very wonderful presentation. Um, also, we receive a couple of questions. Uh, let me pick some. Uh, and before I ask uh, the questions, uh, let me remind to audiences, uh, please use a Q&A window to ask this question, not to use chat window, please. OK. Uh, then, Misawa-san, uh, let me allow to ask in Japanese. Yeah. Uh, 
、えー、と CO2 can be captured and hydrogen can be produced. This is a wonderful system. That's the impression that I got. But coal fired plant investment is now being prohibited in many ways. Is this going to be covered in that direction? Well, technological development is what we are working on, and therefore, finance. Is an area that I'm not very versed in, but to the extent of my knowledge, when financing projects, there are various conditions attached. For example, CO2 recovery capture. If you can make a, car, a contribution to carbon neutrality, then to a certain extent, rules and regulations can be made more lax. I hear that there are such movements and developments. So I think it's going to depend on how that is going to be working. Answer. And one more very, very easy question. Uh, <laughs> this is from chat. <laughs> Any site visit to Osaki is planning? Uh, many might want to visit the project site, he said. Yes. Actually, uh, most of the uh, to our plant. Accepting the uh, COVID-19 uh, alert period, uh, at this moment, uh, seven thousand of visitors came to our plant. Um, uh, this is a very important opportunity for us to understand our technology uh, technologies to uh, many industries people, uh, academic people, or uh, polit political people. Uh, if you have any uh, request or intention to come to Osaic plant, please let me know. Uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are very welcome you. Okay, thank you very much. I, I personally have visited to Osaki Kozjan once, but uh, it's a very, very great facility and I uh, recommend to visit there. Okay, uh, let's go next. Thank you very much, Mr. Misawa. And we, this is the last presentation of part part one. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Takashi Kamisho, Chief Engineering Management Manager, uh, Decarbonization Business Department, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries Engineering Limited. Uh, titled Update of MHI CO2 Capture Technology. Thank you for your uh, patience, Mr. Kamisho. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming here. I'm very pleased to make a presentation here. Uh, firstly, please let me introduce myself. My name is Takashi Kamijo, and I'm working for uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industry Engineering as Chief Engineering Manager. And, uh, uh, I have had a long experience with a uh, shield capture system and for over the uh, 25 years. And today uh, I'm going to talk to you the uh, update and our MHI's shield capture technology. Uh, let's start by our company profile and uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industry Group, MHI was established in 1884. The number of employees, uh, including affiliated companies, is over uh, 80,000. Annual net sales in last year, 2020, is uh, 30 billion US dollar. Uh, MHI product covers a wide range uh, from uh, launch vehicle, fighter, turbocharger, airplane, and uh, gas turbines, so on. And uh, uh, our shield capture system is supported by uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industry Engineering and a part of the MHA group. I'm going to next. So uh, here is a brief our uh, uh, shield capture technology. And uh, we called uh, this technology KMCDR process. And uh, K 
MCDR stands for Kansai Mitsubishi Carbon Dioxide Recovery Process. And this technology is developed with a Kansai Electronic Power Company, which is a second largest utility company in Japan. And the future of this uh, technology is use of uh, proprietary amine, alkanolamines, case one and case 21. Uh, also, we use several proprietary equipment as shown here, amine washing uh, to reduce the uh, amine emission minimum to outside and uh, uh, automatic load adjustment, shield capture system can follow the fluctuation of mother plant operational change and uh, heat integration system around the regenerator and the reason includes the uh, absorber. Also, uh, we have the special design and the special proven design for large towers and the river and so on. Uh, here you can see our uh, extensive worldwide delivery. And uh, uh, so far we have delivered a certain commercial plant and uh, two plants are being constructed in Russia and Bangladesh. And uh, this map also shows the plant in Alabama. Uh, it was a demonstration project with the Southern Company. And uh, 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 we have a demo, uh, Southern Company demonstration plant here because the size is almost a commercial size, five metric ton per day. That's why uh, we show the experience in the demo plant, uh, Southern Companies. Body plant. So uh, here you can see the uh, year of delivery country and uh, flue gas source and capacity and with CO2 application for each commercial plant. So our record range from uh, 200 ton per day to uh, almost 5,000 ton per day, uh, which is mostly for chemical production. And uh, uh, most notably, uh, we completed and delivered world largest shield capture plant uh, in Texas, USA, and for Tet Petronova. The captured shields is used for enhanced recovery. Our technology can also be applied to a variety of application and uh, not shown here, but uh, we are able to apply not only the flue gas but also the low pressure process gas. And uh, uh, now I would like to look at uh, some specific application that we are currently working on or that we completed. Uh, this is a, a overview of a Petronova project. And uh, uh, as a, as you may know, uh, this is the world's largest uh, post-combustion capture plant and uh, capturing CO2 from existing coal-fired power plant. And uh, this plant uh, commissioned and uh, uh, start commercial operation in December uh, 2016. And uh, uh, this project is, was supported by DOE and uh, also finance uh, uh, and uh, in, in, supplied from the Japanese government finance, JBIC and Nixie. So plant location, as I said, the uh, Texas and uh, energy parish power station. And the capacity is uh, 4,776 ton per day, uh, which is equivalent to uh, 240 megawatt coal fired power plant. And the uh, shoots capture rate is 90%. And uh, so, uh, the last year, the uh, operation was uh, suspended, but we are expecting the operation coming soon. Uh, we are not sure, but however, uh, that we are expecting the plant start again. Uh, the, currently, we are working with uh, UK DORAX for the uh, bioenergy carbon capture and the uh, sea exploration project, and the refer that's BECCAs. And uh, uh, MHI and the drugs 
have agreed a long-term uh, contract uh, for use of our KMC DR technology. And uh, uh, if this project is realized in future, and uh, this should be the uh, new largest post-combustion ca carbon capture plant, uh, because the capacity is at least 8 million per year. And uh, so uh, this is very a uh, huge shield capture project. And uh, so uh, most notably, and uh, this facility will be a net negative emission because the capture shields from a biomass per plant. That's why it could be the uh, negative emission. Uh, uh, here is a process application for a variety of flue gas. Uh, as I explained, uh, we delivered a dozen commercial plants before for uh, gas-fired boiler and uh, heavy oil or the coal-fired boiler, uh, but uh, not limited to that, but uh, we can handle a variety of flue gas and listed here. So, for example, the gas turbine cement plant, the biomass, and the refinery, and the uh, FCC gas, or the uh, blast furnace gas, and the uh, uh, steel plant. And uh, uh, so for each item, uh, so that we have the table here, this is a typical uh, uh, condition of, for each full gas source. And each full gas from several industry have different composition and different impurities. And uh, uh, we have many commercial plants and also we have studied for many application. And so we have, we have know-how, what, what kind of impurities are included in the flow gas zone. So uh, we believe we can handle uh, almost all flow gas. So this is an example of the gas turbine uh, uh, shield capture. So recently, the uh, GTCC's uh, demand increasing uh, because the shield emission lower than coal fired and as a plant. And also, uh, GTCC is expected to assist the renewable energies because the uh, uh, power output from renewable energy are fluctuate. And so the GTCC is expected to support the renewable energies. And also shield capture is uh, expected to capture shields from GTCC. And uh, uh, we studied the application of GTCC uh, together with our power uh, divisions. And uh, we believe, we can believe a uh, reliable shield capture system for GTCC. Uh, this is the other example that we are currently working on, and the carbon capture project uh, focus on gas turbine from the LNG Greenfield uh, plant at the next to the seed Rio Grande in Texas. And uh, uh, the total production of LNG is uh, 27 million tons per year. It's a very big LNG uh, plant. Uh, shoot capturing from free gas and uh, shoot separation from natural gas from the ground. Uh, total uh, 5 million tons and uh, our customer plan to six ration for all CO2, 5 million uh, tons per year. So uh, MHS scope is to provide a design package for the contractor to perform the uh, detailed design and construction of this project. Uh, uh, also, this is as an example, the KMCDR technology is uh, a great choice for uh, cement facilities. And uh, we recently completed a feasibility study for uh, additional carbon capture for uh, cement production uh, plant. And uh, a major challenge for a carbon capture plant for cement plant is the full gas from cement plant has a uh, potential to contain uh, significant impurities because they incident so many things. So uh, we discussed with the client and we 
investigated the detail uh, impurities of blue gas. And now uh, uh, we think we, our technology can respond effectively and perform very well in such a uh, cement brand. Uh, this is other example, and uh, steel industry uh, uh, exhausts a lot of CO2 emissions. And uh, we think the steel industry also important to introduce the uh, CCS. And uh, so uh, we are investigating the possibility and we are studying the uh, introduction of the CO2 capture plant for steel plant. And uh, we had a campaign and a demonstration test before, and uh, uh, the test results are available. And uh, we think our technology can be applied to the uh, seed plant also. The last application to highlight is the carbon capture for a marine transportation section. And uh, this may be a future requirement to reduce the CO2 emission from shipping. And uh, we are working with our shipping division to install the small uh, mobile CO2 uh, facility and uh, capturing CO2 from the engine exhaust. And uh, this is a currently a uh, demonstration phase. And uh, we are verifying the result and uh, whether this technology can be effective in a marine environment. So uh, this is the last stage and the last uh, column. And uh, so uh, we are mainly uh, 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 handle the shield capture plant as a technology provider for the shield capture process. And so uh, we like to expand our business for many fields through the shield capture plant. But also, uh, we are now very interested in the CO2 conversion, utilization, and the CCUS field. And uh, so uh, together with the CO2 recovery and uh, CO2 conversion and uh, utilization, uh, we are aiming to the net zero society. And uh, thank you for uh, attention. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamisho. <clears throat> Um, also, uh, there's a lot of actual uh, project and it's, it's very, very useful presentation, I think. Okay, we will see the a uh, lot of questions. And um, okay, I'll pick one or two questions from here. And uh, the first question is, is it possible to utilize MHI's technology to direct air capture? Uh, yes or no, theoretically possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the uh, shields concentration here yeah, is very low, 400 ppm or something. But according to our study, our uh, solvent can absorb CO2 even from such a very low CO2. Mm -hmm. But we haven't tested it before, but theoretically possible. Okay, thank you very much. It may be the uh, related uh, question, and could you kindly explain how much would be the current targeted CO2 capture cost, roughly? Uh, the CO2 cost uh, depends on the site condition, and especially the utility cost, and also the price level of that uh, uh, site location. Uh, one example, the Petra Nova project and the world largest CO2 capture unit. And uh, according to the client, the CO2 cost is around uh, 60 metric, uh, 60 dollars per metric ton. And uh, it includes uh, CO2 capture section and also compression and the conditioning such as dehydration. And uh, 60 US dollar per metric ton. 60 US in Petra Nova. Uh, and I also receive a lot of questions about Petronova. And is it uh, sensitive to ask Petronova uh, operation? Mm -hmm. And and that means uh, some two or three questions 
uh, asks the reason to suspend the um, uh, Petronova and also uh, the estimation of the reoperation of the Petronova. Uh, can you explain something about this? So uh, please make sure uh, the uh, stop of the Petronova project is not due to the technical reason. Uh, solely that they stopped the plant operation because the uh, crude oil price was dropped drastically last year due to the coronavirus. And uh, so because the uh, Petronova plant uh, captured CO2 and uh, captured CO2 is used for the enhanced recovery. So when the crude oil price drop, they cannot uh, enjoy any profit. That's why they stopped the plant. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I I feel very encouraged to hear that. <laughs> uh, the the world's largest CO2 capture plant has no problem in uh, technological reason. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. This. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kamijo. Um, very uh, useful presentation as well as the very useful uh question uh, q and a's thank you very much okay that's all for the presentation presentation on part one and uh, thank you very much again uh, please give warm applause to the speakers thank you very much okay now uh, let me briefly conclude part one uh, I to hear the old presentation, and uh, uh, I think uh, it's uh, CC and CCUS deployment uh, can be uh, possible. Uh, is possible. Um, uh, first, the it's still necessary to tackling with the cost reduction. Uh, the uh, CO2 capture technology in Japan is uh, well developed and also in the top level of the world uh, to hear the presentation uh, of uh, Misawa-san or Kamisho-san. And also, uh, we frequently hear the misunderstanding that uh, in Japan uh, we don't have many uh, oil and gas fields, so that's impossible to deploy the CCUS in Japan. But uh, I understand it's just a misunderstanding uh, to hear the Watanabe-san's uh, presentation, uh, result of the uh, investigation of potential site for CO2 uh, storage site. Uh, we have uh, billions of uh, billions of tons of uh, capacity uh, to store the CO2 in Japan, I think. And also, uh, as uh, Mr. Sadamitsu mentioned in his greetings, uh, or uh, Mr. Nozawa uh, mentioned in his presentation, uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, CO2 emission source in the uh, coast of the Pacific Ocean, and also, the potential uh, CO2 storage site is mainly located at the uh, Japan Sea side. So it's also important for Japan to uh, deploy the CCUS. Uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, and the uh, CO2 shipping technology is very, very important, to, to, uh, especially for Japan. Uh, to deploy the CCUS in Japan. And also, uh, uh, I felt very encouraged uh, to hear Dr. Nishioka's presentation uh, that JOGMEC will continue uh, or uh, increase uh, their support uh, for the deployment of CCUS, not only in Japan, but also go, uh, at overseas, uh, all over the world. Okay, and the, in conclusion, uh, such Japanese technologies or uh, supporting scheme will uh, contribute to the CCUS in Asia and in Japan through the 
uh, Asia CCUS network, as mentioned uh, by Kimura san. Okay, that's my conclusion. Thank you very much uh, for joining the uh, Japan Asia CCUS Forum 2021 Part 1. Okay, and we will take some break uh, from now, and Part 2 will start from 4.45, right? Okay, then uh, let's take a break. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. CCS is a